Welcome to Microsoft Research Summit 2021. My name is Dan Qi Chen, and I'm an assistant professor from Princeton University. Today, I'm going to talk about prompt tuning, which is a recent emerging paradigm in natural language processing. The GPT-3 model has brought us this new paradigm shift in which we can use prompts to query very large language models to solve NLP tasks. That means that we can just use, put some natural language task descriptions together with a few examples as an input query. And then we can ask a very large language model like GPT-3 to output the answer. So in this example, the task description is translated English to French, and the examples are several pairs of the English and the French phrases. And the expected output is a French translation of this English word cheese. So this is a very appealing paradigm because it doesn't do any gradient descent or model update. And all you need to do is the, to construct this prompt to query the model. The GPT-3 model has a huge number of parameters, including 175 billion parameters. And it's basically beyond the reach of most researchers in academia and many research labs. And the GPT-3 paper also shows that this prompting behavior only appears in very large models. As you can see from this figure, if the model size is actually uh, reduced to 1.3 billion parameters, it doesn't work that well. However, the commonly used NLP models, such as BERT or Robota models, have only 0.3 billion parameters, which is basically 500 times smaller compared to GPT-3. So in the past year, there arise a lot of discussion and the research questions about prompt tuning. And we want to understand whether we can borrow this brilliant uh, prompting idea from, from GPT-3 and use these prompts to actually work with smaller language models, such as BERT or Robota. And there are many other key questions, including how should we de even define prompts? And how do you find group prompts? And what is the role of demonstrations? So in this talk, I'm going to talk about two recent work my students and I did on developing better prompting methods. And the first work is called the LMBFA, which is a better descriptive prompt method uh, that works well in data efficient or few short learning setup. And the second work is called OptiPrompt, which takes a different paradigm uh, with a continuous of prompts, which can be viewed as a parameter efficient alternative. So important note here is that both methods actually work pretty well with smaller language models, such as BERT or Roberta. So let's jump into the first work, LMBFA, which stands for the Better Few Short Learning, Better Few Short Fine Tuning of Language Models. So this work was done by my PhD student, Ken Yu Gao, and a PhD student from MIT, Adam Fish. So in this work, we explore future learning. And in most cases, we actually only consider using 32 training examples. And we adopt this idea called prompt-based fine tuning. So this is different from GPT-3. So we use a smaller language models, but we still fine tune all the model parameters in models like BERT or Roberta. But since we only use a very small number of training examples, fine tuning could be also very cheap. And finally, we also propose methods to automatically search prompts and the demonstrations. And this removes the needs of requiring domain, domain expertise and the trial and error. So let me start with what is prompt-based fine-tuning. Let's look at a simple task called sentiment classification. So given an input text, such as no reason to watch, here our goal is to predict whether this text, a piece of text, the sentiment, is positive or negative. So in standard fine-tuning, or here we can also call it head-based fine-tuning, we simply insert a special token CLS at the beginning of the sentence. And then we pass the whole input to the transformer encoder. And then we take the hidden representation for the CLS token and then we build a linear classifier to uh, predict whether the sentiment of this input is positive or negative. In prompt-based fine tuning, we actually take this input text and convert it into a clause statement by adding some natural language description with a mask token in the middle. So in this example, we actually append uh, like a short piece of text, like uh, each of us mask after each input text. So we call this part, uh, part uh, each of us mask as a template. 
And then we pass the input to the encoder and get a representation from this mask position. And we ask the model to predict whether the word great or terrible is a better fit in this mask position. So here, essentially, we also have a label mapping process that we actually map the word uh, great to the label party and then map the word terrible to the label negative. Compared to standard fine tuning, prompt based fine tuning has two big advantages. So the first advantage is that it doesn't introduce any additional new parameters. So we just need to reuse the parameters for the word predictions that people use uh, during the pre-training. Uh, in contrast, standard fine tuning actually needs to add at least 2048 new parameters for binary classification task in robot large model. This actually makes a very big difference in future learning. The second, by formulating the downstream task as a mask language modeling problem, it can actually effectively reduce the gap between the pre-training and the fine-tuning. So in our experiments, we find that using only 32 examples, uh, standard fine-tuning achieves 81.4% accuracy, but using the prompt-based fine-tuning with this template can achieve 92.7% improvement uh, accuracy, which is actually a very big improvement. So prompts are great. So the next question is, how can we actually choose prompts? So we did some pilot experiments and find that the choice of prompts are actually very important. So let's look at this sentiment classification example again. So here again, we use this template, an uh, input sentence followed by it was mask. And then if we use um, uh, great as a positive word and terrible as a negative word, it achieves 92.7% accuracy. So if we change them to the good and the bad, the accuracy drops a little bit. And then if we change the party word and active word to uh, like two random words like cat and dog, the accuracy further drops. However, if we actually we swap the order and we use the dog as a party word and the cat as an active word, the accuracy actually drops a lot. And this is actually very surprising to us. Finally, if we actually use a terrible for party word and a great for the negative word, this actually achieves the worst performance and only achieves 83.2% so accuracy. So let's look at another example, natural language inference. So we want to predict the relationship between the premise and the hypothesis is actually entailment, contradiction, or neutral. So we start with this label mapping, yes, no, and maybe. And then we first start with this template, premise, question mark, mask, token, uh, comma, and hypothesis. And then it achieves 77.2% accuracy, pretty good. However, if we just find a remove um, comma, the accuracy actually drops quite a bit. And then if we put a, um, the premise and the hypothesis both before the mask token, the accuracy actually drops significantly. And then if we change the order or the premise and the hypothesis, we use the hypothesis question mark, mask, comma, and the premise, the accuracy is even worse and only achieves 60. 2.9% accuracy, accuracy. So this actually really means that the choice of templates and also the label words is actually very important. So the next key question is how can we actually find good prompts? And a big challenge arises here is that since we only have 32 training examples or a very small number of training examples, so how to find good prompts and validate whether a prompt is good is actually a very difficult problem. So in our paper, we propose two strategies automatic label search and automatic template search to try to uh, solve this problem. So I'm not going to elaborate this automatic label search process, uh, um, uh, strategy. So it's basically a brute force search plus some pruning process. And then we finally enumerate all the problem combinations and find the best um, combination evaluated on a small number of training examples. And then in the automatic template search, we actually start with the label mapping. And then we use our pre-trained T5 model as an out-of-box solution to generate template candidates. So since the T5 model takes a few in the blank pre-training objective, so it actually suits our needs very well. So we first concatenate all the training examples with these corresponding label words and insert the T5 masking tokens X and Y uh, in this figure. And that means that we actually want the model to actually output so uh, the basic fill in these positions for x and y. So when we do the autoregressive decoding, instead of conditioning on one single example, we actually condition the model on all the training examples and try to maximize the overall log likelihood. 
And then we use the Bing search to generate top 100 high quality templates. And then we evaluate the each of these template, generated templates. For example, in this example, like um, the, the model is able to generate this is mask or mask one. And then we evaluate each of these templates on a very small um, development set. And then finally pick the best ones at the end. So finally, in this paper, we also propose to incorporate examples as demonstrations into our fine tuning process. This is actually inspired by the GPT-3 model, but GPT-3 doesn't use fine tuning. However, different from the GP, what GPT-3 did. So GPT-3 basically on uh, random examples or a couple of examples and add them to the context. So they call this in-context learning. And what we did is we tried to sample one example from each class. For example, here we uh, sample one example from the positive training examples. And then we sample another example from the negative examples sets. And um, uh, we prompt all these like sample examples with a template and the label words that we chose, and then we just concatenate them with the input. And in our paper, we also show that if we have sample examples that are actually semantically close to the input example, we can actually achieve even better results. So we evaluate our um, uh, LMBFF on 15 popular NLP tasks, including seven single sentence tasks and eight sentence pair tasks. In all these tasks, we only use 16 plus the number of classes examples. So in most cases, we actually only consider 32 training examples. So in this figure, we can see that compared to uh, with using, uh, using prompt-based fine tuning with the manual prompts, it's actually already greatly outperformed the standard fine tuning by a largely margin, especially for the sentence pair task. And then if we replace the manual prompts, uh, manual templates with our automatic search templates in LM BFF, we can see that the model can actually achieve comparable, even better uh, results. Again, they are actually much easier to obtain compared to the human design prompts. And then finally, we are incorporating demonstrations further bring significant improvements, and this is our final model. And we also consider ensemble, taking an ensemble approach of many different prompts. Since our automatic uh, prompt search process can actually produce multiple templates easily, we compo uh, compare the prompt results of our generated prompts to assess the many prompts, and we can see clearly uh, clear improve improvements here. And then we can continue increasing the number, number of plan, uh, templates. So if you consider using 20 templates, this can further improve the results thanks to the automatic prompt search. Okay, let me quickly summarize this part. Prompt-based fine-tuning has a great advantage compared to a standard fine-tuning in few short scenarios. And the how to find good prompt is actually a very challenging problem. And we can also incorporate demonstrations into fine-tuning. So in short, a good prompt can be actually worth hundreds of data points. So in this concurrent paper, they even try to quantify the impact of the prompts in different language tasks. I encourage you, I encourage you to check out. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about another work called OptiPrompt. So here, the key idea is to optimize continuous prompts in the embedding space. And this is a work done by my PhD student, Zhe Xuanzhong and Dan Friedman. So in this work, the key idea is that we can pre represent prompts as a sequence of continuous vectors. So actually, the, the biggest advantage of this is that they are actually very easy to search and optimize. And we, in this approach, we only tune the prompts and freeze all the other model parameters. So to, hence, uh, they can be viewed as a, like pro parameter efficient solutions. And we demonstrate a very good performance in a factual prediction, prediction task. And I will also discuss whether this works for other tasks or not at the end. So let me start with what is actually the, this like a factual probing or factual prediction task. So the goal of the factual probing task is to measure how much, how much word knowledge language models encode. So for a fact like DirectX, Developer, Microsoft, we can write a prompt like mask release the director X. And then we can ask the model to fill in this blank, blank and output the, uh, the, uh, the correct answer, which should be Microsoft. So if we don't find the use of right correct prompt, and then if, if we use a different prompt, the result could be actually just wrong and uh, the model outputs in tail. 
And the prior work in this space has attempted using better search prompt methods, such as text mining or paraphrasing, or directly search over a sequence of discrete tokens for this task. So in this second uh, auto prompt work, you can see that they can actually find a sequence of words as a prompt, like an atmosphere, dialogue, dialogue, clone, totally. Although this prompt is actually discrete, but the words are actually very hard to interpret. So we were wondering, why do prompts need to be a sequence of tokens anyway? So this basically comes to the natural idea of our optic prompt. So in this optic prompt work, we just propose this idea that can we just represent a prompt as a sequence of vectors? So here we simply define um, prompt in this format. So we start with the X, which represents the subject, followed and then we followed uh, the subject X by 10 continuous vectors. Um, this is basically our parameters that we need to optimize. And this is then further followed by this mask option, uh, a mask uh, token. So we just collect a bunch of the triples that share this developer relation, like DirectX, Microsoft, or AWS, Amazon. And then the goal here is try to maximize the predictions by optimizing these 10 vectors. So this basic idea, very simple and straightforward. So in the paper, we also proposed an alternative solution. So in which we actually started from a manual prompt, like mask release the X. And then we just replace the two words in the middle, like release and the zero, by two vectors. And then we use the word embeddings of these two words to initialize them. And then we can just do a very similar optimization process to actually optimize these two vectors for this, um, this relation prediction. So let's take a look at the results of this optimal prompt on the LAMA benchmark. So as you can see from this figure, so the green and the yellow bars here represent some of the results from the prior work using the search discrete prompt. So they can greatly outperform the, uh, the menu prompts uh, from the LAMA benchmark. And then if we take a look at the last two uh, bar, uh, the bars, red and purple, so you, by using the um, optimizing the continuous uh, prompts, uh, prompts, we can actually further improve the accuracy from the 40 -ish, uh, 42% accuracy to 48-ish per, uh, percent accuracy. So the improvement is actually substantial. So by using the menu prompts as an initialization, can also further improve the performance and brings a 0.5% improvement. So finally, you may wonder, why do we actually care about the soft prompts? I think there are a couple of reasons. So first, these prompts can be actually very easily optimized using gradient descent, and they can also work very well empirically. But there's a, um, I also want to put a note here that this is actually different from the future learning of the LM BFF work. The optimization process actually still requires a lot of examples to optimize. And the second uh, reason that we care about this soft prompts is that each task can be actually, because we don't erase um, the, all the other language models parameters, so each task can be actually simply, simply represented as a soft prompt. So this is actually very exciting because this can actually pro provide us new ways to study the relationships between the different tasks or how we can actually do the transfer between different tasks. Finally, there are actually also many other recent work along in this space along this line. And they're trying to use the soft prompts for different NLP tasks, including like the natural language generation tasks or natural, uh, other natural language understanding tasks in superglue or question answering tasks. So I encourage you to check out these papers and the soft prompts can work pretty well in many different scenarios. Okay, so let me just wrap up here. So in this talk, I discussed two, um, two types of prompt methods. Uh, this uh, discrete prompt method, LMBFF, and the continuous prompt method, OptiPrompt. And there is a lot of really exciting work going on in this space right now. And there are many possible future directions for further exploration, including how we can learn from the task descriptions and how we can actually use prompt to actually achieve the task uh, transfer and generalization and how we can actually use these prompts to achieve better out of a domain generalization. So for all the work I just talked about, our code and the models are available on these links and the thanks for listening.